So if you're fully ready for the Praxis Math 5165 exam, well, you should be able to answer this question pretty easily. Okay, so what we have here is a third degree polynomial, x cubed plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 is equal to 0. And the question is, is x equals to a root to this polynomial equation? All right, now, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to walk through the full solution in just one second. Also, if you need help studying for the Praxis Math 5165 exam, this is a, a big exam. There is a lot of math to know. Check out my Praxis Math 5165 test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. It will really help you get fully prepared. But uh, let's take a look at the solution to this problem right now. But basically, here we have a polynomial equation, right? It's set equal to zero, and we're trying to solve this polynomial equation right here, okay? So we're looking for the solutions, we're looking for the zeros, we're looking for the roots, and uh, kind of a couple big uh, picture concepts here is that this is a third degree polynomial equation. So the first thing you want to be uh, thinking about is that we have this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra which basically says, hey, look, you got a polynomial equation here. It's a third degree. So there will be uh, three solutions. Now, what type of solutions? Well, you can have real number uh, uh, solutions, or you can have complex or some sort of combination between two, complex or imaginary numbers, right? Now, we're kind of talking about, you know, a lot of different uh, subtopics when we um, are discussing solving uh, polynomial equations. But these are just some things that should come to mind for, uh, for all of you out there. Like, okay, I got a polynomial equation, third degree. I know I have three solutions. So uh, oftentimes, you know, you might be facing a, a test question uh, that, uh, that might say, hey, find the roots or find the solutions, find all the zero, uh, zeros, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular case, we're going to just use the word roots because that's a pretty common description. And there could be some technical differences uh, to these words. But basically, effectively, uh, when you, um, you know, hear or see the word roots, we're talking about solutions. Okay, so how can we check uh, if we have a particular number, right? In this case, we have x equal uh, to 2. And we're, we're just kind of asking ourselves, well, hey, is this... Uh, a root to this polynomial equation. Now, this question isn't, uh, you know, this way. Let me kind of erase all this here. I'm not saying solve, okay? Well, I guess one way to, I didn't put this in my little kind of uh, uh, setup here, but one way you could check the roots is to solve this equation, right? Solve it and then see, hey, is, did you get x equal to as one of the answers, right? So that is one uh, technique, but there's some other techniques that are um, easier and uh, more direct to check whether, in fact, a number is a root in a polynomial equation. So the first uh, way you could do that is to evaluate that particular root. Okay, so in other words, you could just plug this in, this number two, and for these x's right here, and then you know, uh, kind of clean up this side and see if it's equal to zero. Okay, in this particular case, so if, uh, just like when you check a solution in any equation, if you plug it in and the left equals the right in terms of its value, well, then in fact, you got a valid solution. So that you could do that. Uh, another thing you could do is you could actually look at the graph. And this is, you know, if you had a graphing calculator, you could graph this uh, polynomial. Now, I don't know the actual graph of this, but, you know, we said uh, x equals uh, 2 is, a, in fact, a solution, right, or 0. So you would see that the polynomial, the graph of the polynomial would intersect at 2, right? So you can kind of hover your little um, uh, cursor there on a graphing calculator. Or if you did this by hand, you know, uh, it would be very difficult. You would, in fact, have to solve this to know x equal 2 uh, is an x-intercept, a 0 right here. Uh, but anyways, that's one kind of approach you could do. But if you had a graphing calculator, you could just quickly graph it and then hover your mouse over where the graph crosses the x-axis. And if it crosses at 2, that's, uh, you know, another kind of way you can kind of verify that this polynomial, uh, that this uh, number is, in fact, a solution. But these other methods, okay, kind of pale in comparison 
to this method here, and that is synthetic division. Now, evaluating polynomials is pretty easy. Now, if you had a graphing calculator, graphing a polynomial uh, you know, equation and then looking uh, to where it crosses the x-intercepts, now that would just give you the, any real number solutions. But really the main idea of this video is to get you to remember using synthetic division because that's how you quickly check roots, uh, check to see if a number is a root uh, in a uh, polynomial equation, right? We want to uh, use synthetic division. It's an awesome little shortcut here, but uh, let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay, so how do you use synthetic division? Well, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our polynomial equation is in standard form. In other words, it's written to highest to lowest power. So we have three, two, there's x to the first, and then we have number uh, number here. Now, if anything was missing, let's say there's, there was no x squared here, and let's say this is what I had right here, we would have to substitute a zero, okay? Zero for uh, x squared, but in fact, we do have an x squared, okay? So we just have happen to have all the terms here, but there, if there wasn't, you would have to put in a placeholder uh, zero for that missing term, right? We're gonna have all the powers uh, in decreasing order uh, represented. Now what we want to do is look at the coefficients of each of these respective terms. So here we have x cubed, we have 1x cubed, so we're going to just um, put the uh, coefficient down right here. So this is 1, this is a 1x squared, so that's 1. This is negative 4, so we'll have negative 4, and then here we have negative 4, so we'll put a negative 4 right there. So you want to just kind of list out the coefficients of your polynomial written in standard form. Okay, now we don't, you're not just going to write it like this. In fact, you're going to write it like so. Okay, here is the coefficients. We have one, one, negative four, negative four, and then you're going to draw yourself a nice little L type of uh, figure, just like this. Okay, so be nice and neat about it, and make sure you leave enough space right here uh, that you can put numbers in. Okay, so stylistically, you don't want to be, you know, like okay, I'll do it like this. That's not good enough because you, you, we're going to have to put some numbers right underneath here. Okay, so, you know, neatness counts in mathematics. So nice and neat, you know, give yourself a good amount of room right here. Don't make it too much room, but basically the same kind of uh, font size, if you will. That's spacing right here, just like that. Okay, so now we're going to check x is equal to 2 uh, into our uh, synthetic division setup. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this right now. And this is awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna do is once we have this thing um, all set up, you're gonna take the first number, which of course is one, you're gonna drop it down right here. Okay, that's one. And now you're going to follow, follow this little procedure. Okay, so here's how, here, this is, of course it starts with taking this number, writing it down like this. And now you're gonna take this number two. We're checking for x is equal to two. Uh, we're going to synthetically divide two into uh, this polynomial. Okay, so now I'll uh, tell you when we get done with this procedure how you can determine whether in fact 2 is a uh, root or not. Okay, so we're going to do the division right now. So we're dropping the 1 down like so, and you're going to go 2 times 1 is what? Well, 2 times 1 is 2. All right, and you're going to put your answer to this first step right here. Okay, now the next thing you do, you're going to add down. So 1 plus 2 is what? That's 3. Okay, and now what do you think we're gonna do? Well, we're gonna do the same thing. Okay, but now we're just gonna go, instead of two times one, we're gonna go two times three is what? That's six. We're gonna put the answer right here, just kind of scooting over just like this, and you're gonna repeat the steps. So now you're gonna add down like so, and we're gonna have negative four plus six, which is what? Positive two. All right, so what do you think we're gonna do? Well, we're going to repeat the procedure. Okay, so now we're gonna go two times that two, which is what? Well, that is four, so we're gonna put the answer right there. And then, of course, we're gonna add down. Now, our last column right here that we're adding, okay, this right here, this is what we call the remainder, all right? So negative four plus four is zero. Okay, so if you get a zero, all right, well, let's just kind of do it this way, regular zero, and there's no confusion. If you get a zero, that means that this number is uh, a solution to that polynomial, okay, is a root, okay, if you get a zero. Now, why? Well, there's other theorems. You got to 
know about the remainder theorem, the, the factor theorem, et cetera, et cetera. But just basically, you need to understand, oh, you got a zero there. Therefore, this number is, in fact, a root uh, to that polynomial. Now, another way you could do this is to evaluate, right? So if we're checking for x equals 2 is a solution, well, here's our polynomial. We can simply plug in 2. Uh, where all the x's at and just kind of do the math, right? So 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is uh, 8, and then we have our 4, and you can see everything will cross cancel. 8 and negative 8 is 0, positive 4, negative 4 is 0, so 0 is equal to 0. So when we plugged in 2 here, it worked out. Now you might be saying, well, this is pretty easy too. Why, you know, why go through all the business of uh, synthetic division? Well, this is an easy example, okay? In more complicated polynomials, or uh, numbers, we were using a nice little number here like two, it can get much more exciting or a lot more work to evaluate and plug things, especially if we don't have a calculator. But with synthetic division, I mean, this is an awesome little tool. And that's why you learn it, okay? This is why it's taught. And uh, synthetic division is actually a subset of something called polynomial long division.